Today we're going to be talking about an artificial intelligence architecture called the pandemonium architecture. So the human mind is capable of categorizing objects in a way that is elusive to artificial intelligence that at the beginning of the development of AI presented a roadblock in many useful applications. So first, we're going to take a look at these images. As humans, we can tell that this and this are the same shapes, and that this one is distinct from both of the other ones. It's a bit of a psychological mystery what allows us to group these objects together, even though these two are drawn in different ways from different perspectives. We can tell that they are clearly more similar than this one. So this, this issue is called the image constancy phenomena, and creating a computer system that could perform these sorts of groupings is why the pandemonium architecture was created. Another example is recognizing letters, which has many practical applications in scanning, storing, and searching handwritten documents. We can see here the letter A written in substantially different handwriting, yet we as humans would recognize each of these is the letter A. Initially, object recognition was explained by template matching theory, which states that we have a template for each object and we would match it against what we see. However, this image constancy phenomena disputes the validity of this theory. How could we have templates to account for the, every variation of each object? How could we have a, a template for every single way that a person could draw an A? We would need, for example, to have millions of templates. This is likely infeasible for the human brain and is certainly infeasible for a computer. We can't codify every single way that an A looks to a computer for it to do handwriting recognition. So the pandemonium architecture addresses this problem by breaking down a concept into its constituent features. Feature recognition is an important concept in psychology and artificial intelligence because it allows us to explain the image constancy phenomena. For example, the letter R can be broken down into three features. A straight vertical line, here, a rightward facing curve, here, and a shorter diagonal line, here. It shares some of these features with the other letters K. You can see that it shares these two features, but differs in this feature. And but so these three features grouped together are our concept of the letter R, and then K, which shares two but has a different feature here, is the letter K. So in his paper, Pandemonium, a Paradigm for Learning, Oliver Selfridge described a computational model that could do this sort of analysis. He describes groups of demons that communicate in layers to one another. These demons are grouped into four stages. The image demon, the feature demons, the cognitive demons, and the decision demon. The image demon's job is simply to relay the perceived image towards the feature demons. The feature demons yell, that is, they send a positive signal forward if they detect their assigned feature in the given image. So for instance, there may be a vertical line feature demon here, or sorry, here, and a horizontal line feature demon, and the letter P would be fed to both of them, and only the horizontal line feature demon would begin to yell when it sees it. The cognitive demons are listening to specific assigned feature demons, and then they yell based on how many of their feature demons are yelling. So here we have a group of feature demons hooked up to some cognitive demons. So you can see that this one, this feature demon is silent, these two are yelling. This one is hooked up to a silent one here, and a yelling one, so it's yelling relatively quietly to this one, which is hooked up to two yelling feature demons. So the decision demon, which is the last demon, simply outputs, it listens to all the cognitive demons, and it outputs whichever cognitive demon is yelling the loudest is the ultimate decision on what we're, what we're looking at, what the grouping is. So we're going to look at a, an example for how the system works as a whole, for the letter K. So here, we see the letter K is being fed in. This is the image demon. All it's going to do is feed it forward to these feature demons. So this is the feature demon for a, a forward slash. This is the feature, or a backward slash. This is the feature demon for a forward slash, a horizontal line. And here we have a feature demon for like a, a backward C kind of shape. So you can see the way these are hooked up to these cognitive demons here is that B and R are both hooked up to this forward shape because they both have it here. The backward, the straight backwards line is hooked up to all of these because they all have a vertical line here. And then this one is hooked up to K alone, and this one is hooked up to K and R. So when this image demon feeds it forward to here, what we're going to have happen is this one is going to remain silent this one will begin to yell, so it'll send out 
yells along all of its paths here. Then this one will begin to yell because it sees that it has this feature. It'll yell here to K. And then this one will also begin to yell. And I'll send it out here. So here we see that B is only getting one yell coming down its path. R is getting two. And K gets three. So the K cognitive demon will begin to yell the loudest, and that will hit our decision demon here, which will correctly identify this letter as the letter K. So the development of the pandemonium system. In the development of the pandemonium system, we see how artificial intelligence and psychology work hand in hand. The architecture itself is based on findings of feature detectors on a very, a very small level found in frogs, cats, and octopuses. So as such, it was inspired by biological psychological features, and then by defining a system in which these feature detectors could be used, it helped forward our psychological understanding of the human brain. This cooperation between biological and artificial research shows a path forward for both sides that has recently borne fruit in the form of the surge in artificial neural networks, which we've seen great success with. It also shows that a prime benefit of artificial intelligence research isn't just to create helpful computer programs, but also to understand how we ourselves think and work.